To illustrate the principles of the Scrum Chat and why it's required, we look at its development from a normal chat engine, which is sometimes called a turbo chat. The operation of a chat engine is sometimes characterized as suck, squeeze, bang and blow. Air is sucked in at the intake and compressed by the compressor. The compressor is basically a series of fans which squashes the air down into a smaller volume and raises its pressure. The higher pressure air means that firstly we can control the rate of burning, secondly that the burn is more efficient because the reaction rate is better, generating more heat at higher air pressure, and finally that we obtain enough oxygen from the rarefied air of the upper atmosphere to allow good burning. Fuel is then sprayed into the air and it is ignited, generating hot gas. Because both sides of the combustion chamber are open, Combustion is, roughly speaking, a constant pressure process. Finally, the hot gases which are generated are expanded and accelerated through a nozzle to produce thrust. The jet engine works well up to the speed of sound, but above this speed there are problems. The compressor fan blades can't operate because shock waves form around them and this causes extreme and unpredictable pressure fluctuations which results in mechanical stresses. This means that in turbojet-powered supersonic aircraft, the air must be first slowed down to subsonic speed. This is done by having a duct before the engine. However, such a duct at very high speeds causes excess drag. Fortunately though, at such high speeds there is an alternative. Once the aircraft or vehicle is moving this quickly, the compressor itself becomes superfluous. The air is travelling so quickly and has such high kinetic energy that it has been rammed into the intake of the engine and this compresses it without the need of a rotating fans. Such an engine has no moving parts and is called a ramjet and is a successful engine which works in missiles and similar high-speed systems. As we try and push a ramjet to even higher speeds though, we get to another problem. The energy of the air is constant and as we slow it down as it enters the intake of the engine, the energy which it loses, the kinetic energy in its speed, must go somewhere and it goes into heating up the airflow. So the air becomes extremely hot and this causes three large problems. Firstly, the fuel and air may break down at such high temperatures and not react in the way we expect. Secondly, the materials of the airframe may not withstand such temperatures. And finally, it becomes impossible to add further heat to the flow, which is already extremely hot through combustion. So we can't energize the flow to produce thrust. The answer to all these problems is not to slow down the flow so much. And at some point this means that the flow needs to be supersonic throughout the engine. This is a scram jet. But the problem is that performing the mixing of the fuel and the air and igniting the resulting mixture at supersonic speeds is an extremely difficult problem and probably the most difficult problem with scramjets.